Nobody likes the TSA, nor should they. It's a massive waste of tax dollars to pay baby Huey officer Farva type goons to fondle people's privates, including children. And if they opt out, they get a dose of radiation and a picture of their naked body placed on a computer. No thanks. Americans should not subject themselves to airport voyeurism and molestation. This guilty until proven innocent system is based on scare tactics and it is motivated by greed, not safety. There were those of us warning about this many years ago. I wish we didn't have to be so reactionary in reversing this government gone wild. So I hope you'll listen to me now. The TSA is nothing. They are useful, uncaring idiots collecting a paycheck to enforce draconian laws. These authoritarian perverts are nothing but pawns. Let's dig a little deeper following the money to see how the strings are being pulled. Always follow the money, folks. This is about multi-millions of dollars for security contracts. It is not about making you safer. It is about making them richer. You are not safer. They don't care about you. They don't give a damn about you. Let me say it again. They don't care about you. They are using you to make money for themselves. And that is what Al-Qaeda is all about. Something to point to to justify military spending and security spending. These scanners are about the national security complex, which is a wing of the military industrial complex. It's the same ludicrous logic that, that justifies why we put weapons in outer space. Why? Because it involves a lot of large industries and it costs a lot of money. The Defense Department is the largest portion of the government. They're completely unelected and they get more money from our government than any other body. It is the largest umbrella corporation in the world and weapons and security are larger than drugs and oil and even pharmaceutical companies. The largest industries on earth are weapons and security. More than logistics, more than anything. They are using the American public as a medium to profit for themselves. And their excuse is always the same. Scare tactics. Be it terrorist, communist, whatever it is, the boogeyman, the xenophobia, the bigotry, the racism, some reason to scare the hell out of you about the people that live however many miles away that are going to come get you. The security complex will exaggerate and lie to you. They'll actually even stage so-called terror attacks or terrorist attempts in order to justify selling more of their own equipment. Last year we had the Patsyana plane, the Christmas Day bomber. And that just a few months ago we had the so-called cargo bomb attacks that actually didn't have explosives. An initial examination of those packages has determined that they do apparently contain explosive material. Uh, Peter, doesn't this con contradict what we've been hearing earlier today from East Midlands Airport, where the suggestion was it wasn't explosive material? Well, well, it seems to. As the President said, one package was found aboard a UPS plane in the cargo terminal of East Midlands Airport. In the midst of all this, Leicestershire Police had said they'd examined a suspect package. It turns out to be a printer cartridge with wires protruding, but they'd found no explosive traces. Which begs the question of how they knew to look into that cargo if there weren't any explosives. What triggered them to open that certain package to find powder and wires? Well, I'll show you how all this connects right now. The first red flag after the Patsy on a plane was Churchhoff going on every media outlet and promoting these naked body scanners. Just so happened to be an underwear bomber. He put the bomb in his underwear, meaning we have to see you naked to see inside your underwear, just in case you have a bomb there, which would justify the sale of these naked body scanners from RappiScan. Well, you look at RappiScan and its actual parent companies are OIS and ECIL, a company run by the government of India. Then you go back and look at the Patsy on a plane and how the hell did he get on that plane? He was escorted there by an Indian man, somebody from intelligence. Kurt Haskell joins us now on the telephone from... Uh, the suspect approached with a well-dressed Indian man. He, he looked like he was wealthy. 
uh, maybe around age 50, and obviously the, he wasn't the suspect Yeah, To me, he just like looked like a poor black teenager, maybe around 16 or 17 years old. Mm-hmm. And they weren't doing anything out of the ordinary except that they were together, which they kind of looked like an odd couple to me, mm-hmm. and it kind of caught my curiosity, so I watched them as they approached the ticket agent. And I was about 10 feet away, sitting on the floor, and it was pretty quiet. I could hear, you know, the conversation pretty well. And and only the Indian man spoke. And what he said was, this man needs to board the plane, and he doesn't have a passport. And the ticket agent then responded saying, well, you need a passport to board the plane. And the Indian man uh, then said, "Uh, he's from Sudan. We do this all the time. This wasn't some terrorist that snuck a bomb in his underwear past security forces. He got on the plane without even having a passport. He was escorted on the plane. They put him there. He was a prop. He's from Nigeria, but they blame the whole thing on Yemen. Why? Why Yemen? Who, why would India benefit? Who would benefit from saying Al-Qaeda was in Yemen? Who's been caught in Yemen before with a fake terrorist cell? Pointing the finger at Yemen is about ports. It's not about terrorists. I wrote a long report about it after the Christmas Day bomber about the port of Aden and its relations. It's one of the only, it's one of two of the the coasts available for the Chinese to go into Africa that doesn't have a Western presence already. We have the pirates' pretext for taking over Botswana and Somalia. Yemen was the last stitch. They started there all the way back with the USS Cole. It's too much to get into, but it's been false flag after false flag. That was the latest patsy. The fact that they blame this cargo bombing on the Yemen's as well was very fitting. Let's look at the timing of the so-called cargo bombs and see who was profiting. We'll go back to ECIL. On their own website, they report that OIS Systems received $9 million dollars in advance for cargo vehicle inspection technologies on September 24, 2010, less than a month away from the so-called fax machine bomb. And RapiScan Systems received from our government $325 million from the TSA on September 16, 2010 for its naked body scanners. Undated on the site for OSI Systems was the $24 $24 million order for their cargo vehicle inspection systems, which I found out by going to Business Wire, happened on October 11th, just a couple weeks before the so called bomb sent from Yemen. Of course, there weren't any bombs sent from Yemen because the British admitted there weren't any explosives in the cargo and there weren't any UPS planes flying out that Friday from Yemen, so they must have got on there somewhere else. Yemen is a boogeyman. Yemen is an important access point. This is the Indian government and the U.S. working together to profiteer and picking on and kicking around third world countries. Profiteering is one thing, but risking staging an event is quite another. It must have been pretty desperate to pull something like that off. Well, let's look at OIS's annual reports from 2007 to now. Their operating cash flow went from negative 2.3 million to positive 54.2 million, a difference of 56.5 million dollars. And we know where most of that came from, government contracts. It must be nice to be on the government payroll. So there's the 56.5 million reasons for them to stage an event favorable for their special machines. See, they think no one's going to sit down and go through all this dry documentation and read this. They know CNN's not going to say anything. I thank goodness for the internet allows just even one person to break the news and then you all know. Screw the TSA and have a nice day.